Hi, everybody. I just got here a few weeks ago. I'm super excited to be at WBI and to talk to you a little bit about my research today, uh, which for the last five years or so has primarily revolved around this idea of, of live coding performances. And in a live coding performance, the performer gets up on stage, creates a work of audiovisual art by programming it in front of an audience, and oftentimes uh, projecting the source code for the audience to follow along with. So this is one type of popular live coding performance practice called Algorave, where in club environments, instead of having DJs that take turns performing one after another, you have a bunch of live coders that, that take turns, and sometimes people dance. Um, <laughs> Uh, here's a, another example of a picture of that. So in addition to these kind of informal environments, we also have performances that take place in more formal concert settings. This is the Laptop Orchestra of Louisiana, and they're performing with software that I create called Jibber, which is kind of uh, foregrounded there in the, the first laptop. Uh, here's another example. This is the Princeton Laptop Orchestra performing this past April, also using uh, Jibber, the software that I work on. And Jibber has been used in over two dozen colleges and universities to teach basics of computational media, programming, and digital performance practice. But it also gets used to teach uh, younger kids. So this is a middle school and high school summer camp uh, taught at Louisiana State University, uh, where the kids spend a couple of days using Jibber and then perform in groups collaboratively at the end of it. And in a similar vein, uh, this is an after-school program in Armenia, uh, a two-week program uh, where the entire program is taught, is, is teaching people to use Jibber, do these live coding performances, and at the end, they all take turns doing solo performances, having learned a little bit about sound synthesis and, and music programming. And so now I'm gonna hopefully pull off a little bit of live coding. Uh, inside of Jibber, which just runs in the browser. No. Oh, the internet? You, yes. All right, let's try that again. And I'll talk a little bit about a, a couple of the different research areas that I'm exploring with this. Um, so first, the hello world in, in Jibber is to make a drum loop. And that looks like this. And one of the th things I spend time thinking about is what does it actually mean to project source code to audience members? And what does the code mean to students that are looking at this for the first time? And so you see in this line of code, there's that flashing square that's highlighting the different characters in the drum pattern showing you which sounds are being triggered by which characters at any moment in time. So you can quickly kind of start to make associations between the pattern symbols um, and the sounds itself. So I'll make that a little bit more complicated. And so now I'm gonna take that loop that I just created, I'm gonna tell it to um, reverse itself every measure. And so here what you're seeing is the code is actually changing to show the underlying state of the data that's being filtered and transformed. So you kind of have this live view representation of what the underlying data is so that you can more easily understand the algorithmic processes that are happening underneath. So now I'm gonna go and make a baseline and tell it to play random notes out of a scale every quarter note. And so in this annotation, I've added these code comments immediately after the, the random uh, function, which is showing you the actual value that's being generated every time the, the code gets triggered. So you start exploring more complex algorithms, you get this real-time feedback in addition to the sound or the graphics that you're seeing about what numbers are actually being outputted. And for the last trick, uh, Jibber is an uh, audiovisual programming system, so I'm just going to make some graphics here. And uh, let's see, I'm going to, one of the things I think about is how to make it easy for people to tie the audio and the graphics together. So there's, and here I'm going to take the scale of this knot that I just created and map it to the output of the drum loop that I made earlier. And then you get this kind of dancing graphics. So with 
five or six lines of codes. We have a drum beat that's changing over time, a bass line, graphics, and graphics that are responding to the, the audio. And that's a, a little bit about Jibber. Thank you.